Yeah, it's a good to see you again. Perfect. Thank you very much. Nicholas Kuzmich! Welcome to the stage, Nicholas Kuzmich. I'm gonna ask you guys to stand up and give a huge hand to Nicholas Kuzmich. Hey, Nicholas Kuzmich here. And you know what? I've had the good pleasure and honor to speak on stages at events all around the world. And I do my best to bring the most value per minute from those experiences. But honestly, sometimes some of the greatest nuggets and content comes after the talk, during our Q&A sessions with the audience. And so in this week's episode of Netting Up, I wanna take you behind the scenes on one of these Q&As that I did right here in my hometown of Toronto at my good friend Dan Martell's Idea to Exit event. In this event, there were some SaaS owners asking some great questions, and we got some great answers that I think will help you in your business. So go ahead, enjoy. Let's go ahead and cue that intro. I want to know, where do you learn to tell stories like that? Because a lot of these people have a message to share and they're probably looking at greatness and they want to know how do I even attempt that first step. I, 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 it wasn't learned. I, I think if I'm, if I'm going to tell a story, uh, my, my own thing going on in my head is relive it while you tell it. I mean, it's not a story. I, I want to experience it as it's happening and I want anyone who's hearing the story to experience it with me. Um, so I think the more details I can add about what actually happened, like you can say, hey, I walked into the room, or you can say, I walked into Sunnybrook Hospital, and there was that person, that was there was that person, and the nurse was dressed like this, and I remember her hair kind of being like that, and just really reliving the experience for myself. And I think in that process, um, the people who are, who, are, or who are following the story along will relive it with you. How many of you guys felt that? Um, I'm going to let the room, if you guys have any questions for Nick, just put your hand up and we'll run a mic. Um, well, I guess we'll just get into Q&A since there's a whole bunch of people. Yeah, just a stand and name. And, and we, we, can, we can talk as high level or as, like, as granular about Facebook ads or marketing and social. Thank you so much. Marketing in general, social mar anything, like, wherever you want to go. Yeah, John? I'm John from Portland again. Hey, John. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. <laughs> Hi, John. John. Hello. Hey, I uh, really appreciate the stories and sharing so deeply about the things that matter. Uh, on the other end of things, I'm curious if you, uh, based on your experience, if you see the same sort of resonance uh, on the business side of things, because I, I can understand on the consumer side of things, but selling and marketing to businesses, you see the same uh, effects and the same impact from trying to build that resonance. Yeah, I mean, to me at the end of the day, again, my, my primary belief is that people in today's world will transact based on resonance. I mean, I don't know how many of you have ever been in a room, you've seen a guy speak and then he tries to sell you something, he said all the right words at all the right time, all the cues were perfect, and you're just like, something just doesn't feel right. And then the other guy gets up, butchers the bloody thing. He's like, oh, oh man, whatever, and then he's like, well, I got this thing to buy, and you're like, I want that and you buy it. Um, so B to B, B to C, B to anything, I think at the end of the day, people will transact based on resonance. And so the, the economy that we're in demands authenticity and demands narratives that can connect to people on a deeper level. Now, it doesn't have to be you tell your life story, per se, 
Um, but I think if I'm going to choose to do business with, with, so, I mean, the reason why I'm here with Dan and, and some of our other friends, it's, I mean, there's, well, Dan's a different story. I was going to say there's a lot of people who teach what Dan does. I don't think that's true. But there's a lot of people who say different things, and you, we choose who we connect with just because we feel connected to them. So I would think, when I say the narrative, I'm not necessarily talking about like sharing your life story per se, or your background story, but just this idea of narratives that connect with your customer or client. Um, is what's going to accelerate that transactional process. D does that make sense? Yeah, I could see I could see in the business sense that certain stories building that sort of resonance, like, oh, like you were like you were saying, like I know how you feel. Right. How you feel. Thanks, cool, Sean. thank you. Awesome. Uh, let's go this side of the do we have Mike Renner? Anybody over there? All right, right here. Hi, I'm Vera from Moncton. Hey, okay, one, two, three. Hey. Hi, Vera. <laughs> Moncton. Hi, folks. Yeah, Moncton. Yeah, we're from Moncton. Hey. Um, so this is a thank you because I'm going to reveal something here. I've been in marketing longer than half of you have been born. <laughs> I actually worked with David Ogilvy. I wow. worked for Ogilvy. I ran advertising agencies for a number of years. I've run a company for 25 years, and I have not heard anyone explain the Ogilvy orbit as well as he did. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. That was wonderful. Awesome. It also brought me back to the basics, which I think I've forgotten. Mm. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Gary. Bill. Philip from Halifax. How are you guys? Halifax. One, two, three. Hi, Hi Philip. Amazing. Uh, you have no idea how much it connected with me. So just a quick question. Uh, clearly, you hit rock bottom. You never covered. How did you? come back up to where you are now? Um, I think it was a combination of two things. Uh, thing number one was I just surrounded myself with one of the advice that one of my brothers gave me. He goes, this is good actually, he goes, anybody who asks details is an enemy. And he goes, anybody who's just willing to love you through this without knowing is a friend. Um, so, uh, yeah. So I surrounded myself with people who were just like, Nick, I don't want to know. I don't even care. I love you, and I'm here for you, whatever you need. So it was the surrounding of myself with a handful of people who were willing to love me through that. Um, and then I think the second thing was um, I wasn't in a rush to get out. I think I realized, and I'm coming to this realization, that I think life in its highs and its lows is meant to be experienced fully. And so many times when we hit a point of like struggle or whatever, I think that's why I had to go lower and lower and lower until the universe was just like, just embrace this bloody thing for a sec. You prideful son of a gun. And so it was at that moment where I was like, okay. And I embraced it and I wasn't in a rush to get out. And I let healing take place through nothing more than my loving friends around me. Um, that's when things started to, to um, to turn around for me. And I wish I could say it was a nice formula or a framework or a goal that I had or a vision board on my wall. No, it's just like really loving people um, and me saying I'm gonna embrace every part of this, the, the good, bad, and the ugly, and the healing process. And yeah. Thanks, Philip. All right, we got time for one more up here in the front. You know what, we'll do two more. You wanna go next, Marcel? Deval Bhatt from uh, San Francisco. Hey. Hi, Deval. So uh, I really uh, enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. Um, actually, while you were presenting, I got the domain resonate.ai because that's the name of our product, Resonate. Uh, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a good idea, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so my, que <laughs> my question is, uh, um, we, you know, our product helps um, email marketers improve conversion rate using sentiment analysis and machine learning. Uh, and I'm trying to improve that uh, story uh, more and more as I communicate with people. But uh, the product is for B2B yeah. email marketers. And uh, I want to I understand how do I go about establishing uh, resonance with uh, the people in B2B space, kind of similar to what his question was, but I want to be more tact. I want to get more tactical yeah. answer. Like, do I smile and dial and get on call with them, like Dan says, 
Do I go to me? Well, first, do whatever Dan says. <laughs> I pay him really well to say that. Period. <laughs> yeah. And if my things contradict, just do whatever Dan says. <laughs> but, well, so I think there's two, the two, the two ways I would look at that and, and understand it is that, like I see a spectrum and I call them hot buttons. If I were to draw uh, a, a chart with four quadrants in him, um, uh, on the one side, I'd say there are fear frustrations, and on the other side, desires and wants. And I think everybody is motivated by either fears, frustrations, wants, or desires. Um, and I think fears and frustrations, unfortunately, are greater drivers than desires and wants. So the first thing I would do is, is very, be very, very, very clear on what are the pain points of your ideal client or customer. Like, what are they really, and I'm not saying, I want better email deliverability. That's not a pain point. Why do they want better email de deliverability? Like get to the core of that pain. And then it's, it's as simple and as difficult as in all of your correspondence that goes out, whether they're white papers or blog posts or videos or smile and dial in or whatever, you make sure that that is clearly articulated in your conversation. So every time someone reads a blog post or a white paper or sees a video of you or they're talking to you on the phone, they need to feel like they're understood by you. And if they can feel like that, they're not going to ask you a price. They're not going to have to worry about those things. They're like, OK, this guy gets me. What's next? Um, so the medium uh, or the, the platform doesn't matter. It's being intentional about communicating that in all of your correspondences and communication as those go out. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Taval. We've got one more. Time for one more right there in the center. Thank you. Hey, Marcel Moncton. Hi, Marcel. Uh, first yeah, of all, I may, be, I may be biased right now. Just yeah. <laughs> Dan rolls several deep to the <laughs> yeah. six, as they say. Um, so first of all, thank you. That was extremely compelling. And you, you had us hanging on every word. That was amazing storytelling. We appreciate that. Um, my question is, we, we did this uh, six word intro kind of thing um, throughout the weekend. And um, it's you know like, we do this for this. Um, and now we're talking about making our customer feel understood. So I'm imagining my landing page. I'm trying to figure out if I should go with, this is what we do for you, or if I should change it to something like, hey, you have this problem. Like, what's your strategy on that? Uh, a little bit of both. Um, but if, if there was an 80-20 rule, I'd, I'd, uh, yeah, the, whole, the whole adage on the online space is when someone lands on your page, they're asking, what's in it for me? That's it. So if they, within the first couple of seconds, don't get that answer, like, what's in this for me, um, they're going to bounce. So it's not to say that you don't talk about what you do, because they want to know. That's a part of connection. They want to know that you can help them. But um, I'll put heavy emphasis, 80% of the emphasis on them, and then 20% of the emphasis on this is what we do. But I always like to, a good copy sequence that we use often is what I would call feel, felt, found. So it's this idea of, hey, I know how you feel, because I felt the same way too, until I found this. And that's where you can start with pain, Connection, solution. Now, you wouldn't use those words exactly, but it's essentially, I know how you feel, because you're going to describe that. I felt the same way, too, building rapport and connection until I have found this, my discovery or my solution. Right? So um, I was having a hard time uh, getting people on the phone with me to get my advice, and I was kind of figuring all that out. Uh, you know, it was such a hard time until I found clarity. And there's this, so it's kind of a natural progression through slipping in, and not in a weird way, but just naturally slipping in your solution as the solution to the problem that they're experiencing. Guys, Nicholas Kuzmich. Thank you.